All right, we are live. And this one we have uh, our friends on. So we've got a lot of people um, kind of hanging out, watching, watching the post. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the final brand that I have on my face right now. And then we're gonna go into a full um, review on the entire process that we did. So I have uh, with simplicity, and you can see here, I ended up coloring the hair a little bit more. I know that's a, a sub thing, but again, I, my hair was totally gray here and um, I used something kind of fun. So I'll share with you that as well. Uh, so again, I did touch my makeup and you can see my nose is totally itchy. I have allergies for whatever's going on outside. And so I just retouched my lipstick and that's the same thing I'm doing each time. So looking at the makeup, and uh, here, we'll get close so you can see. I don't think it moved too much. So um, the, I usually show you guys this. I didn't have any, I mean, there's maybe a little bit in there. Yeah, a tiny bit, but usually that crease like fills up with makeup. <laughs> so, uh, so the interesting thing about this makeup today was that it didn't ever, I never got greasy at all. So like I never saw any weird shine come out. So that was interesting. Uh, and like, it looked fine. And Tim, you know, I asked him, what do you think? And his answer is always like, either it looks bad or there's no answer. So this answer was, well, at least you don't look like a TV reporter. And that's, you know, because they cake it on, you know, you have to have that mask on. And so he likes to be able to see the skin and he, he liked it. So he didn't have any issues. Uh, you can see some redness around my nose just from me wiping it, but that's par for the course. Um, but otherwise it didn't, it didn't really move off. Nothing really, I don't feel shiny or weird or that the colors, the colors didn't change. Sometimes with mineral makeup, the colors will shift. So uh, I do want to, I'll tell you some of my favorite things about this brand. I liked um, this. This was kind of a, came out of nowhere. I thought I'd try it. <laughs> it was really fun. So this is their brow pencil. Now I don't do my brows um, and I, I should, I should probably get the darker one so I could try it. But I used, this is the taupe color. And I was hoping it would be similar to my hair color and it is. So when I, I just did this like, you know, not that long. I made it shorter so it wouldn't break off. But I just colored all of the gray and I can maybe see if I can part my hair for you guys on another angle. I don't know if my finger will part it well enough so you can see the amount of gray that I have. So all of that, that little, that line from here to here, I covered up so it, it actually did a good job. And I was nervous because it's more of a, this is more of, of like a, almost like a clay or something. I don't know, it's, it's not a powder. And I'm used to using powders on my part. And so I thought maybe it will be greasy, but it, it didn't, it, it worked fine. So I was like, huh, and I can feel it on there a little bit, but it didn't make my hair look greasy. So that's all that matters. Uh, so that worked pretty well. And I used to do it with, I used to have darker hair and I do it with the darker and then I'd put my sunglasses up here and then pull my sunglasses down here and I'd have a little line here <laughs> of the dark, you know, and so it didn't transfer and I did wear sunglasses today and I did have, have them on my head when we went out to lunch and I pulled them back down. So uh, no problems there. The mascara so far is my favorite. This was my favorite mascara. And just again, I'm going to actually on the full review, I'm going to share with you a favorites from each of my company, each of the companies that I, that I thought were good. Uh, this mascara didn't, um, I feel like, and so you guys can see it here. Um, this mascara wasn't clumpy. Oh, it's hard for me to see it at the same time as you guys. So I just have to stare at the camera. Uh, it didn't, there was no clumpiness for it when I was putting it on. So it didn't get those. What happens with my eyelashes is it'll get those little weird like chunks at the end. And I don't like that. I want them to be like clean, nice, smooth. Um, lashes. And so this one didn't do that. And then the other thing that often happens with lashes is it flakes. This one didn't flake at all, which again was surprising to me because natural mascara typically does. The other thing this didn't do, which I've been having a problem with practically every mascara, is this side eye, this left side, 
they stick together all day long and I'm constantly having to like pull them apart. <laughs> so, so that was kind of a, bl a, a blessing on this one. So the mascara for me um, is probably the biggest deal because the, it's just been, which company is gonna have a good mascara? So it's not waterproof though. Um, so just know that I'm sure that it will run all over the place if you're a crier. <laughs> so if that's you, like I wouldn't be able to wear this in the summertime because we're in the pool too much and you know, it's, uh, so I'm sure if we got it wet, it would not last. Can even try here. Just pulling it with my finger, with my getting it wet there. It didn't, it didn't do anything with just spit, but then again, tears are different than spit. So this is with simplicity. Okay, so I wanna share one thing that came up today that put me on about a two, two and a half hour research rabbit trail. So I have been researching 25 different brands, 12 of them, I've gotten the brand, put it on, done video, the whole thing. So the amount of time this has taken for research, I'm human, I will miss things. And I basically was comparing to my avoid list, these companies ingredients. So it came to my attention today, one ingredient in their liquid foundation. So I want to, I want to go over this because this is, this brought me down a really interesting rabbit trail that will help us understand some other things too. I always love that as an educator, whenever we're able to really understand something and get a handle on it. Now I did reach out to customer service just to find out like, what's the deal with this? Because like, it was new to me. So this is technically a synthetic and I'm going to share with you real quick some kind of information that I found. So um, boron, is it boron, boron nitride. So there's boron nitride in their liquid foundation only. Okay, so this is important to note in their liquid foundation only. And it's a relatively new ingredient that they put in, in um, cosmetics. Now you might think, what is that? Or you might even know, like, isn't that synthetic ceramic? <laughs> so it sort of most, it, it kind of emulates uh, like what talc does in makeups. It really does well, which makes sense now with absorbing any additional moisture. So it will just kind of act as a, so if you live in a humid climate, that might be a good thing for you. Okay, so then you're like, wait a minute, Jen, you've been screaming at us to not use synthetics with essential oils. Okay, so this is the rabbit trail I went down because one of the main things that is listed about boron nitride, if you research it at all, is that it is highly, um, it is like, you know how we put oils in a plastic diffuser base? And all of you have gone ballistic about that too. Like, wait a minute. Isn't our, aren't our diffusers plastic and aren't we not supposed to be putting oils? Well, and then you start hearing people claim it's medical grade or whatever. Not true. It's just, it's hard plastic that's resistant to chemical erosion and essential oils are chemical eroders, right? You guys know this. So boron nitride is a, a ceramic like substance that is created in a lab that is used in things like your, you know, to keep you warm, but also be breathable. So as a snowboarder, it's all over the stuff that I use, <laughs> you know, like, like we want it to be breathable, but we want to stay warm. Um, it's in thing like it, it emulates kind of almost like granite, I suppose, but it has this kind of white consistency and in cosmetics and there's multiple different types and in cosmetics, it's apparently the hexagon version of it, and it is the strongest form. And what I mean by strongest is it's completely like not, it doesn't respond to any erosion. There's, it's like you have to put acid on it to get this stuff to like decompose. Okay, so it's a breathable synthetic that doesn't interact with essential oils. So, and the interesting thing, because with Simplicity is the only company really that has a lot of essential oils in their products. There isn't any essential oils in their um, foundation that I'm aware of, but there's essential oils in their other products. So knowing that, 
it's, it's like an interesting thing of, is it breaking it down? And so again, my research led me down to, to the path of showing that ni boron nitride does not get broken down from essential oils. So that's a big deal and it's breathable. And why is that a big deal? Because then I went down the rabbit trail of silicones because we've been talking about silicones. Apparently in the same aspect, silicones are not easily broken down by essential oils either. They can get permeated by them, but they won't break them down. And you know, as a soap maker, I have silicone molds and I can see sometimes the essential oils will stain them but they don't break them down. So I, you know, I could put a drop of lemon on a silicone mold and leave it there for weeks and wipe it off and it doesn't break it down. Like when you put an essential oil drop on say styrofoam, it breaks it down. <laughs> so it, that was an interesting thing. So in the same token then, you could technically use silicones, right? Again, I'm sort of changing some stuff here because I want you to understand that I'm still researching, that's part of it. But the problem with silicones, in my mind, the problem with plastics, like when we get into actual non-breathable plastics and synthetics, is that your skin can trap things. So if you have any acne or anything that's kind of break, broken out on the skin or anything that can get under there, that's why our skin will look worse for wear when we constantly put on something that's more plastic-based, more silicone-based. And that is why a lot of companies will say, we don't use silicones in our, in our products. And the reason for that is because you want that breathability and silicones don't, silicones create like the mask, like, like tart, right? Tart is, you can't get it off. Nothing takes that stuff off. So, um, so you need acid, right? So that's uh, literally, like, that's why they say the micellar, which is basically citric acid that you're, it's, it has to eat away at it. <laughs> so, so I, you know, and that's where I kind of think we, you might do some tests with your makeup to just see. I have found that when I use oxy serum with certain products, I get breakouts. So that's a big deal for me. And so that usually is all the riddled other synthetics. So when you have a ton of other synthetics, that's the problem. So based on my research, the boron nitride is not a huge deal to me. The other not huge deal to me is the fact that I don't typically wear liquid foundation at all. I've just been doing it for you guys to show you like what it looks like. Uh, so that being said, this, this brand passes. Uh, some of you guys were laughing at me. You, were, you thought I meant pass, meaning pass, move on. <laughs> so I changed it to that it's clean. Um, and that's what we're going to go over next. I'm going to show you kind of what my criteria was for and how we kind of broke it down. And so synthetics are bad. We know that. We don't want synthetics in things. So if your goal is to be completely synthetic free, I'm going to share with you a couple things that we have to be understanding of in our next um, portion of the video. But I also want you to know um, certain things are not, essential oils are not going to break them down. Uh, so it's an interesting thing for sure. So I appreciate you guys for sharing some stuff with me. And, um, and yeah, anything makeup wise that has say silicones in them, they do get removed. I just, I know for the tart, it took five washings for me. Um, there are some things on, and what I mean by washings is with the micellar, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it, vitamin C um, stuff that breaks down the makeup. So we'll go over some of that stuff too. And you, you need makeup remover, like you need actual makeup remover. So, uh, and I don't believe Tarte had a makeup remover and I thought they probably should for the Amazonian clay cause that's full of, it's like a lot of synthetics like a lot of plastics. So otherwise, um, like for instance, uh, like Crunchy has dimethicone and I could wash that off no problem because it's a small amount of dimethicone. So it's like low down there on the list. So again, it just depends on how much. So you got you got to determine your own skin and what you want to handle. I feel like this wore fine today. I actually like the fact that I wasn't oily and greasy. Um, if I wore this for the next say 30 days, that would tell me if I was having any issue with the boron nitride. Um, but again, because uh, the research I've shown is not going to it's not gonna interact with any of my essential oils. So that's a good thing. So that's the, the basic review for 
with simplicity. And there's a link you can use. Uh, they gave us a really good discount. I tried to work with each company uh, that would work with me to like, can you give us a good discount? Because everybody here is just scrambling to try and find a new company. And part of the, the thing I actually liked the best about this company too were their sample packets. So you get these little samples and they're good size. So there's enough in here for Pi 2 applications. You could probably get two applications of their liquid foundation samples too. And I liked this because this meant that I, I didn't, I wasn't gonna get a dried out sample of the liquid, which happens with some of the company, companies. So the samples were helpful um, because there was enough in there. I found with like some other companies like Crunchy's little sample card was just pathetic. I mean, it's just showing you the color so you can just put like a tiny bit on and how do you know? So I was all over the place with that. I went through three different colors. <laughs> finally figured out that the one I thought wasn't the right one because when I put it on my skin it, it was the right one so it's sort of like wait a minute so samples are important and having the right size so they got that right I, I was pleased with that um yeah so otherwise this this was also great so I'll just kind of go over the colors real quick with you all and then we'll move on so um shade one I'm a warm two in in savvy and an ivory, I believe, in the makeup. Is that right? I have it here. Let's see if we're savvy. Yeah, ivory 1002. So the liquid one, shade one, liquid foundation matched the best for my skin. The mineral matte powder foundation was a medium. The concealer was bare. So that worked with my skin the best. Uh, this was an interesting thing. This the stick, this tri stick they call it. Uh, I used Brighton. Now you saw me in the morning put it on my lids. That was not a good idea. So I'm going to back that out. Not a good idea, because that was too moist and it it I my lashes were transferring. <laughs> so I was like, oh wait, no no no, because that doesn't really dry. It's more like a moisturizer of a. Thing as opposed to something that's going to go on and dry. So don't put this on your eyes. Um, this was really for cheeks and lips. I guess you could, but again, it didn't interact well with the, with the mascara. So, um, and then the pressed eyeshadow, I used creme brulee and Moscato. Uh, I did order some other colors, the darker ones, because I wanted like that bright blue one that they have and the purple one. I think it's Dahlia. I forget the blue one name, but just some funner colors, more fun colors for eyeliner. Cause I do like to do that every once in a while. Like today I'm wearing two random colors and it would be nice to have like that blue in there. Um, and then the peony lip gloss, the pink clay lipstick, which I used the pink clay for my cheeks and that worked much better for me. And then that retractable, retractable brow pencil in soft taupe for my hair. I also used the face primer, the setting powder and the botanical mascara in black. Uh, they also have nail, nail polish. And I've seen this with other companies where they say 10 free or 12 free, like meaning it's free of 10 common toxins. Um, with Simplicity has a 15 free, 15 toxic free, like there's 15 toxins that are commonly found in nail polish that they don't have in there. So I ended up buying, I think, something about some beach one <laughs> that I thought was pretty. It was just like kind of a, a brownie pink. So we'll see about that. Um, and you can use a code Gen Author uh, for a discount. Uh, I think it's, I don't remember the exact discount, but I think it was, a, it was a good one. It was a better discount than normal. So you guys can use that. And otherwise, that's with simplicity. So it's very good. Hope you guys love it too. All right, take care.